The health system in the Naga region has reached its worst state since the 2021 military coup. Maybe he could have been saved if he was given a vital medical injection or he got proper treatment at the hospital. The Naga self-administered zone is one of the most remote and least developed parts of Myanmar. Healthcare access has always been affected by bad roads and poor communication networks. But locals say the coup has made things so much worse. Hello and welcome to Do Athan, a weekly podcast that brings you human rights stories from Myanmar. It's brought to you by Fondation Hirondelle. This episode is produced by Frontier Myanmar journalists. Names and voices may have been changed to protect contributors. The military doctor title is just a title. They are usually fresh graduates who recently finished their training. In my case, the local nurse even had to teach the doctor how to inject the anesthetic, telling him, Doctor, you have to inject it one inch away from the wound, and you have to hold the needle at 90 degrees. Seeing that, I thought, is this doctor not experienced? Could it be harmful for me? I was quite worried. Go Sui, a resident of the Naga self-administered zone, was recollecting his experience after visiting a military-run hospital to get surgery for his boils. Because the surgeon on duty didn't have the confidence to perform a minor surgery, Go Sui was transferred to a different hospital. They told me that they would refer me to another hospital, either in Michina or Mandalay because they don't want to have a problem if something goes wrong with me under their care. So I had to go to a private clinic in Mandalay for the surgery. It was just normal boils, for goodness sake. Gosue is not the only one facing this kind of problem. After the 2021 military coup, many healthcare workers, including doctors, joined the anti-military civil disobedience movement, or CDM. To fill their positions, the military regime used doctors from the army. In line with policies it has used for decades, the regime has sent those with less experience to remote states and regions, including the Naga Zone. This has had a negative impact on the health care available. Local people told Do'athan that hospitals and rural clinics in the Naga SAZ don't have enough health care workers, and they can only treat common illnesses. In addition, some hospitals have specialist equipment, such as X-ray machines, but staff don't have the training to be able to use the equipment. A resident from Don He subtownship, Uwo, explained. Currently, in the Don He area, the only health care workers we have are one nurse and two midwives. There are no doctors here. The clinic only has enough medicines to treat colds and common illnesses. If there is a patient who needs surgery or a pregnant woman in need of intervention or someone who needs more advanced health care, we have to go to other townships or villages to get treatment. It's not easy to travel around this region. The towns are quite far apart and the roads are in poor condition. It can often take whole days to travel to different towns. Fuel is also expensive and prices are increasing, meaning it can be expensive to travel to different areas. Uwo said it costs about 500,000 chat to hire a car to go to Nanyun or Shinbuyan, the nearest towns. That's a price many people cannot afford. Especially for pregnant women, they have to travel by car to Nanyun or Xinbuayan to give birth. The round trip would cost about five or six lakhs. For the people of Danhe, who don't have a high income level, that's extremely expensive. However, since a person's life is very important, 
We have to borrow money from others to make it happen. There are volunteer organizations that can help transport people to different parts of Naga, but they also face issues with poor road conditions and high costs. Gosue, who used to volunteer for a social welfare association, said they can't provide free services to people in need anymore. There's a funeral service association which has a car. However, the fuel has to be paid for by the patient's family. So instead of using the car, it's cheaper for them to rent a motorbike. It would only take two gallons of petrol for the round trip on a motorbike. A car would need about seven to eight gallons, so it would cost more. Because of this, there is no free service for people in need anymore. Another problem is a lack of communication networks, particularly in remote rural areas. When contacting Naga residents for this article, Dorothan found that phone lines were often out of service or connections were poor. But villages without telephone lines in the Naga region used to be connected to each other through walkie-talkies. These were also used to contact health authorities during an emergency. However, since the 2021 coup and the emergence of the widespread resistance against it, the military junta has stopped these tools from being used for what it says are security reasons. Usam, a Naga politician, says the icon walkie-talkies, which many people previously used, were crucial in healthcare, as well as education and business. He's angry about the ban. It is the junta that is mainly not allowing the use of the icon. They do this deliberately so that they can dominate the area. And they justify the ban by saying there are EAOs in the region. It shows that they are not considerate of the public's well-being and their problems. They are focused on war all the time. Without the walkie-talkies, people in the Naga region are now finding it even more difficult to communicate in medical emergencies. Some Naga residents believe this ban on walkie-talkies has been responsible for people's deaths. Like that of Gohu. A young man in his 20s, he was a farmer and the father of two small children. His uncle, Unwan, from Lahe Township, explains what happened to him in the rainy season last year. When he was at the farm, he suddenly got sick with a fever. He was sweating a lot. It happened so fast that we thought it would be better to send him to the hospital, but he passed away on the way there. In some areas where communication works, patients can be picked up by a motorbike or a car from Lahey Township to get treatments. If only we could have contacted them, maybe we could have saved him. Gohu lived in a village 20 miles away from Lahey Township. The journey used to take an hour and a half, but it now takes about four hours due to a damaged road. In this case, the family couldn't contact the hospital, and villagers tried carrying Gohu and walking towards Lahe. He died on the way. Unuan can't help thinking about how his nephew might have been saved if medics had been able to reach him in time. <laughs> If the communication system had been working, we would have been able to arrange transportation for him from the village, and the hospital could have sent an ambulance, and they might have met in the middle to give him the urgent medical treatment he needed. Maybe he could have been saved if he was given a vital medical injection, or he got proper treatment at the hospital, but we had to bring his body back even though we were nearly at the hospital. I still feel sad when I think about this. Gohu died so young. His wife and children, one of them only a baby, are now helpless. Local politician Usam says everyone in the Naga region is helpless in the face of this deterioration in healthcare and the lack of communications. The health system in the Naga region has reached its worst state since the 2021 military coup. 
we hear a lot and see a lot about pregnant mothers dying on the way to hospitals or people not making it to the hospitals in time. And even if they do, there's often no medicine or there are no doctors to treat them. Many people are dying unnecessarily because of these situations and they are helpless. The public is not getting any help. Thanks for listening to this edition of Doa Fan. We'd welcome your feedback on social media. This project on human rights reporting is supported by Fondacion Hirondel with the help of our donors. You can listen to our podcast via the Doa Fan Facebook page. They can also be found on SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes and Spotify. You can also listen every Saturday night from 9 to 10 p.m. and Sunday morning from 6 to 7 a.m. on Voice of America Radio. Please tune in again next week.